So as I told you, we are in the Uganda Railway Museum. Come on, let us show you. Ah. Wow. So we are in the museum. As you see, this is the museum. So uh, can you explain some of the these writings on the board, you know? Okay, so what we have on this side are the artifacts. Yes. And they have written information about the museum. Mm -hmm. So mainly the first panel, we look at the life before the library came in Uganda. Okay. How people used to move from one place to another. So we know that early migrations were taking place at that time. So those that we are businessmen, we are moving in a caravan. Oh. This one here. Okay. And those that we are staying along Lake Shores to meet their relatives, friends, they are using canoes. So this was in 1910s. Yeah, 1910s. Oh. Early migrations that we are taking place. So in Uganda we have different kingdoms and we are looking at the central part. That is the Uganda kingdom. Okay. It is the one that was organized and it had such kind of roads. So this is how Kampala looked like in 1900, a Kampala road. Mm -hmm. And the road that takes you to the king's palace in 1875. So that's how the life was. Before the lady came, yeah. Oh, well, uh, at that time, we are having what we call butter trade. Oh. You give me something, and I give you something. Mm. So, people are moving from one place, like they had a center where they could all gather in one place mm. and then start trading the things. So, they're using these roads moving from here, just the way we are seeing them, mm -hmm. and they meet at the center. That's where they could trade whatever oh. they had. Oh, I see. So uh, when we come on this chart, when the Uganda railway line was started, I think this is the chart. Yeah. Uh, what, what is all about this? I see people seated on the, rail, on the train. So a brief of it. It's so a brief of it. Cotton was introduced in Uganda around 1930s. Mm -hmm. And it was introduced by Chris and Barrow. When cotton was introduced in Uganda, we never had proper roads, as we have seen earlier, and mm -hmm. companies that can help to process cotton. So therefore, the missionaries had to go to the British Parliament, that's where it starts, mm -hmm. and they introduced the bill of the cotton that was introduced in Africa. So when they introduced the bill, the British Parliament was very willingly to fund the construction. That is where the construction comes in. So the bill was there in 1895, and then the construction, 1896. So this Uganda Railway, where did it start from? It started from Mombasa, Mombasa. it came to Kenya, and later in Uganda, why is, it called, why is it called the Uganda Railway? The reason why they call it Uganda Railway is because the major reason was to reach Uganda. Uganda oh. were strategically located, we had minerals, we had fertile land, mm. and then they wanted to assert their domination on the source of River Nile, which was discovered by John Speck. Okay. So that is the major reason. Yeah, when we, we look at this chart, yeah. why is it having these spot marks? And, you know? So as I told you, cotton was introduced in 1930s, yeah. and it was introduced to the central part, Buganda Kingdom, firstly. Okay. So they had transport cotton before the East African Lairy came in Uganda. Mm. So they are using such kind of ships, and they were docking here at Port Bell okay. to transport cotton from Port Bell to Chisumu, that is Kenya. And that is where we got our first Lairy. So the dots you are seeing here mm -hmm. are the places our first Lairy covered to. And that is where we get the name Kaleri. Kaleri. Yeah. Wow. What, what is the meaning of Kaleri? So Kaleri means a small line or a mono line. So the first line we got in Uganda was one, mm -hmm. or mono. And that is where the natives of the central part, of, after seeing the one line or the mono line, they just called it Kaleri. Oh. So that's why we have a place called Ikalere in Kampala because of the first line. The first line to be constructed in Uganda was in Busoga. 
or so the from, East African lady. Mombasa, was it Mombasa? Mombasa to, to Jinja. To Jinja? Yes. Wow. So the first line to be constructed was Namasagari line. And it was constructed around 1912 to 1915. So that is why you are seeing Bosoga and Lairi line connection. Oh. So this is the places the the line covered. Okay. So I the see. black and the places. So this is these are the ones. Yeah. Now we've come to the what are these? So these are called lamps. Lamps? Such kind of a lamp is found in front of a train mm -hmm. and it is bright during night shifts. The drivers are the ones that use it. What's the use of it mostly? It gives light mainly during night hours when the train mm -hmm. is moving. It, this is a it's headlamp. like a, sp a spotlight for the, like, let me say for the car. It's found, yeah, it's found in front of a train, a oh. headlamp oh. of a train. These are the ones. These are the ones. Yeah. And then this was used at the station for signal. So just the way we have traffic lights on the road, whenever the train came and they found red, mm -hmm. it meant stop to the driver. There are other trains in front, you have to stop so that they can, can continue and then this, you can continue their journey. Now, the, I think our viewers, they are out. Mm. Eh? They understand the train that it's a, a vessel yeah. that can't stop immediately. Mm. So, about this light, mm. the red light, mm. how long will the train takes to stop when they see the, the red light? Well, the train takes some time to stop, but mm -hmm. they have a handbrake. A handbrake. So when a train is coming from Jinja mm -hmm. and it is going to stop here, okay. they start to stop it very fast. So for it to stop completely, they use a handbrake that helps it when it reaches at the station. Wow. And um, what is this? This was used where the passengers were sitting. Like the lamps? Yeah, in the cars. The lights and... Yeah. Wow. And then that is the water filter for first class. So on the train we had different classes. We had the first class, they were the whites. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones that we are using such kind of a water filter out of clay from London to take wow. clean water. The second class were the Indians that constructed a library network. Yeah. And third class were the Africans. Yeah, this is called a Lairi sleeper of 1910. So the ships we are asking about, the mm. ships actually were the one transporting such Lairi sleepers from India. So this is a second hand Lairi sleeper because they're the ones we are using at that time. Wow. So this is the first ed cabinet where medicine was kept. Oh, I was expecting yeah. to see some. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit old. So this was for East Africa Lair and Harbors. Oh. That was the company that was governing the Lairies at that time. So a ticket is the one that authorizes you to move from one station to another. It had where you are going okay. and where you are stopping. You are stopping. Like from so these tickets, to these tickets had, uh, uh, let me say, uh, for a month, uh, monthly? No, 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 no. It depends on the distance you are covering. Uh, yeah. Just the way we pay money in the taxis, like from here to Jinja, that mm -hmm. is how it was. Well, all of them are media people, mm -hmm. but what I can tell you about them are the people that had an opportunity to use a train in the early days. So you can call them like veterans. So wow. these people were there when the train was working for passengers. Mm -hmm. So some of them were businessmen, others were passengers, others were just workers in the Lairi network, and they give out their experience how it was using a train in those early days. Oh. So that's where they are. This is called a spotlight lamp, and it was used in times of emergencies. Emergencies, what we call, as the train was operating, they encountered different difficulties. Mm -hmm. We can say accidents. So in terms of an accident, they were using this, it's called a spotlight lamp. So such kind of a lamp, it was using kerosene or paraffin. Okay. It could be pumped to increase the brightness we are using this and reduce. So this kind of a lamp could help to give out a signal to the general public to get to know that an accident happened somewhere so that they can avoid the line 
all that train that is coming to. So before we even got the Amapensas, we have the small button phones and then the you smart mean phones. this is the latest one? Yeah, these are the latest. Ah, so this the is the one you could call, the one that replaced the phones we have. Oh. You could call, they're here and then you call, you press somewhere if you want to call here. Wow. And then this one was kind of like a radio call. You speak and then you listen to the person. Wow. So it's kind of like a walkie-talkie over over and that's how it is. So this is a century old seat. It's made of the old mahogany trees that existed before even our parents thought about bringing us on this earth. So this is a combination of something wood and metallic. It is kind heavy mm. and it is like 100 years. 100 years? Uh, people are sitting on such seats waiting for the train to take them to different stations. So just the way we have seen out there, there are different seats. They are the ones we had. Oh. So we just painted them for the people wow. to see that it existed. Wow. And I see a lot of books. I see receipts. I see, uh, what is this? Kenya Road Motor Services. So these are different documents. Some of them are for the early years. Oh. They have been there in the development of the Uganda Lairi Network. So this is how they look. They had, so every train and each station had documentation that it could be written. If, for example, if you had explosive materials, we look at fuel, they had the rules and regulations you had to go through. For the train that was transporting things, they are all documented. For example, you're coming from Seta to Kawolo, mm -hmm. they had to register. So this is how it was like booking tickets for third class. Mm -hmm. Those are the Africans, that's why you are seeing this black man here. They could register your station. Um, and then these are called cash bags. So cash bags is where money was kept. And such kind of cash bags could be here like this to such belt. people. Yeah, on the belt. You put in the money and then you close. So that's how it was. Wow. And the what? wallets, they had that. Time. Oh, those are the wallets for yeah. those days. And this was the machine printing out your tickets. So after your ticket was printed out, it was stamped. And the stamp had to be of the Larry network or of the Larry station. So after your ticket is stamped, they are helping you and you pick them from here. It's called a ticket tube. So a ticket tube, as you can see, had all tickets and all Larry stations where you're going. Mm. So the charges could be depended on here from where you're going and where you're stopping. Wow. So that's how it was for third class. For third class? Yeah, and for first class, they had a different way. And they had this. Wow. So it was kind of like free automation. Put in the coin, press the button, and then your ticket is printed out. Here? And, and yeah. where the ticket comes from? Here. Is so where this, you put the coin in here? here. Oh. So this was working around 1948 to 77, the period East Africa Lairi and Habas wow. was in charge of the Lairi network. And wow. then this is a map. The chart. Okay. Okay. And that, the entire system covered too. So for the green, we look at Lairi network. It all started here and it came. This is the first line I was telling you, Namasagali line. Oh, yeah. And then Kampala, 1931, 1956, 1961, 1962, and then 1964, Pakwach district, where the construction ended. So where we are seeing road network is Masindi, where the first hotel mm -hmm. was constructed. That is Masindi Hotel. So that is the part where roads were developed very fast so that the ships could transport them and then they use roads to access a hotel. That's it. This is a wing scale. A wing scale. So they were pushing this 
the major role of our Ugandans where all Africans wear pottery work. Yeah. So you could push this, this and measure your cargo here. The kilograms your cargo had is the cost you had to pay and you had to protect your luggage as a person. Wow, I thought... So this was used for communication. So whenever the driver was coming from Kampala to Jinja, just the way it is illustrated there in the photo, oh. he can't move out of the train. He stays inside the train. So what they could do at this station, this is called electronic token. So this is how electronic token looks like. Okay. It has the line you have to, to follow. Just the way we have different lines. Mm -hmm the lines that takes the train to different places. Yes. So it had the line you had to follow. For example, this shows Kamali district. Namasagari is where you're going at the station. Yeah. So they could get this and put it in here. And it is attached on this. So whenever the driver reached at the station, you don't move out, they give you this. Oh, you and it's shared it inside you. where they have authorized you to go, the line and the station. That's how they are working. And then this, if you look at these figures, they are upside down. If to tell if the construction was going on well, they could see through here. So this was used by the engineers at that time. So it could act like a pinhole camera. Oh. So if you look here, they are upside down. So you can try out and look through here and see them just right up. Oh, this side, when you see from here, they are not, they're, they're not upside down. Yeah, they are straight. They are straight. But... Oh. So that's how it was. So you can check on the display. We try to bring out the lazy connections, how it went to different places. So this is the India where we are. This one here. That is the old bridge, it is just an assumption. That is the old bridge of 1929, where the train passed on top. Mm -hmm. They went to western part of Uganda, 1956, and it was all about copper. So we look at this side. It was going through a tunnel that side. Mm -hmm. So the train could be moving. It's not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how it was. So it had yeah. It had to Yeah. And I can make it to one. So, uh, what is this? Well, this is called a signal lever. A signal lever. A lever, yeah. It switches the train from different rails to other rails. Just the way we see we have different railway lines from yeah. line one to mm -hmm. line two. So they are using this. So this was, they pull it up and down. Okay. Yes. And just they, yeah. and pull this, it. Yeah. And, and they switch a train from one line to another line. Oh. That's how it was. So I want to welcome you. We call this our coach or locomotive. So this is where our passengers after the entire tour, they sit and they watch the entire video about the entire history. So we had this in a plan that the clients that can't get the entire information from the museum, let's say children, at least they have this part where they can watch something and they put it in their mind. Mm. So the way the arrangement is, it could be like a first class. As you can see, we have seats. Yeah. So people, it could be shared by two, two, two people. Mm -hmm. And then we have this room here. It could be like first class. If someone is tired and it has a sink, someone is tired and want to rest, there is a place there where you can go and sleep. 
And then we have a kitchen where they could be cooking food from to be given to these VIPs. And then it has a washroom. There's no need for you to go out of your room. You just stay there in the cabin.